Hi everyone. In this example, I'm going to show you how to determine the kind of the response of a second order system. So there are three uh, systems provided for us, G1, G2, and G3. And for each case, we need to determine the value of zeta and accordingly uh, the type or the kind of the response expected. So we already know that the the kind of the response depends on the value of zeta. If zeta is equal to zero, we will have an undamped system, undamped response. If zeta is between zero and one, we will have underdamped case. If zeta is equal to one, we will have the critically damped. And for zeta bigger than one, we will have the overdamped response. And the standard form of the second order system is provided here for you. So it's omega n squared over s squared plus 2 zeta omega and s plus omega n squared. Now let's take into account g1, which is 12 over s squared plus 8 s plus 12. So from here we can see that omega n squared is equal to 12. Therefore, omega n is equal to square root of 12. On the other hand, 2 zeta omega n uh, 8. Therefore, zeta is equal to 4 over omega n, which is equal to 4 over square root of 12. 4 over 2 times square root of 3 or 2 over square root of 3, it should be around 1.15. I believe let me just double check it. Yes, it's 1.15. So for this G1, we have zeta equal to 1.15. As a result, our system is uh, overdamped one. So the location of the poles of the system could be also determined. We have the poles at P1 and 2 at minus zeta omega n plus minus omega n square root of zeta squared minus one. Or it could be also written as minus zeta omega n plus minus square root of zeta squared omega n squared minus omega n squared. And in this case, it will be given as minus 4 plus minus square root of uh, zeta omega n is equal to 4. So here we will have 16 squared minus omega n is equal to Uh, omega n is equal to square root of 12, so you will have 12. As a result, we will have minus 4 plus minus 2 as the poles of the system. So p equal to minus 2 and p2 equal to minus 6. So this is uh, the an example of the overdamped system. So here I can write that this is overdamped with zeta equal to 1.5. Now let's check out the second one. So 16 over s squared plus 8s plus 16. G2 is equal to 16 over s squared plus 8s plus 16. If we write it in the in the form that we have, the standard format, we will have 4 squared s2 plus 2 times 4s plus 4 squared. So therefore our omega n squared is equal to 4, omega n is equal to 2, zeta omega n is equal to 4. As a result, zeta is equal to 2. Therefore, 
since zeta is bigger than 1, this system is over them as well. And the location of the poles can be determined that minus theta omega n plus minus square root of omega n squared zeta squared minus omega n squared, which will give us minus 4 plus minus square root of 16 minus Uh, okay, sorry. So here, since omega n2 is 16, omega n is 4 indeed. And since omega n is 4, zeta is equal to 1. So I made a mistake over there. And for omega n equal, zeta equal to 1, we have the critically damped case. So this is critical damped. Sixteen minus sixteen here will result in one and two equal to minus four. So both of the poles are at the same location, and the the kind of the response is over damped, critically damped. Therefore, I can for G two I can have I can write the critically damped with zeta equal to one. Now let's check the third one g3 is given as 20 over s squared plus 8 s plus 20 so omega n squared is 20 therefore omega n is the square root of 20 which is 2 times the square root of 5 zeta omega n is equal to 4 therefore zeta is equal to 4 over omega n which is 2 square root of 5 and therefore zeta will be equal to 2 times square root of 5 over 5 or 0 0.4 square root of 5 The location of the force for this system could be, det could be determined as p1 and 2 equals 2 minus uh, zeta on a line, which is 4 plus minus square root of zeta squared omega n squared minus omega n squared. So we will have minus 4 plus minus square root of zeta omega n is 4. Here we will have 16 minus omega n squared is 20. Therefore, we will have minus 4 plus minus j to p1 and 2. So this is the case when we have the uh, underdamped under uh, response for the system. And we, if we find out the value of zeta, we will see that zeta is between 0 and 1 in this case. The exact value could be determined. It's uh, so square root of five is a little bit more than two. So from here, the zeta would be somewhere around 0.85. Maybe I don't give you the, the exact value, but it's somewhere around there. So for the third case, zeta will be around 0 0.85, and we will have the underband response okay so that's all for this video you can see that given the different values for zeta and omega n we can have systems with different kind of response for the second order systems that's all for this video i hope you have enjoyed it and see you in next videos